I'm going to show you three nifty little tips that you can use when you're on the web. So first of all, I need to start up Internet Explorer and go to a web page. To make it easy, I'll go to our own web page, www.helpfulbooks.co.uk. Here we go. And I'm going to go on to one of the articles on the website. So I'll click on free articles on the left. And let's go to this one. Now I can scroll down it using the bar on the right. And it might be that I want to print out part of this article. I could print out the whole thing by clicking here on the print icon, but I might just want one part. For example, this bit on hard drives. Here's what you do. First of all, you select the bit you want by clicking at one end of it with the mouse, holding down the left hand mouse button. And at the moment, it doesn't look like anything's happened, but trust me, move the mouse to the beginning of the bit you want and then let go. And you can see what's selected because it's white writing on a blue background. Then go to the print option and you can either click here on this little arrow or go to file if you've got the file menu and then click on print. Doesn't matter which way round you do it. Either way, you'll get this screen. Now here's the clever bit. Instead of just clicking print at the bottom, click on selection here. Then click on print at the bottom. And that way it'll only print what you've selected. That specific part of the web page. The second tip I want to give you is how to change the size of the web page to make it easier to read. Now this is particularly useful for some web pages where the writing's really, really small and it's hard to read. Or just if you have a small screen or if you just struggle to read at the normal size. And it's easy to do. I'll just go back to the main page. So I'll just close down this tab. and click on here to take me back to the main page of the website. Now there are three ways of doing this. The first one is to look down in the bottom right hand corner of the screen. Click on that little arrow and choose a size from this list. That might be a bit too big, but I can make it smaller or slightly bigger than normal. Or back to normal. The second way is to hold down the control key on the keyboard, the one with CTRL written on it. There's two usually, one at the far left at the bottom and one on the right. Hold that down and roll the wheel on the mouse. Don't press it down, just roll it forwards and backwards. And you can gradually make it bigger or smaller. I don't know if you noticed, but while I was doing that, the number in the bottom right hand corner was changing as well. It's just another way of doing the same thing. And when I do that, the size of the writing and the size of the pictures changes. But if it's just that you have a bit of difficulty reading the writing, you don't necessarily need the pictures to be bigger as well. And there's another way of doing it. If you go to the view menu, Point the mouse at text size and choose a different option here. It just changes the size of the writing. The pictures all stay the same size. And for a lot of websites, that's a better way of doing it. Because if you make the pictures bigger as well, it just all gets a bit big and clumsy. So I made it smaller or you can make it bigger. Whatever you prefer. I'll put it back to medium. That's the size I like. By the way, if you have an old version of Internet Explorer, you won't have all of those options. You should still be able to go to the view menu and choose the text size, but you might not be able to change the size by holding control and rolling the wheel on the mouse or by using the option in the bottom right hand corner. And if you use the new Google Chrome browser instead of Internet Explorer, the control and wheel method does work.
but you might not be able to do the other. The last tip I've got for you today is a way to save a web page. Now, if you ever buy things online, you'll sometimes get a receipt on the screen. And if you've got a printer, you could print it out to keep for your records and to prove that you did actually buy it. But that could use a lot of paper, or you might not have a printer handy, or at the time you've bought something, your ink cartridges might have run out. So it's useful to have another way of doing it. Here's what you do. When you're on the page that you want to save, go to the file menu, or if you don't have a file menu, you can click on this button instead, the page one. And either way, go to the Save As option. It'll give you a screen like this. And in this box, the middle of the three, make sure it says Web Archive. If it doesn't, just click on it and select it from the list. Then click on the Save button. It can sometimes take a few seconds, and if there are a lot of pictures, it might take even a bit longer than that. But it saves the entire web page, including all the graphics. And if you've got an order number on there, because it's a receipt, that'll be saved as well. And once it's saved, you can go back to that receipt at any point in the future. You don't have to be connected to the internet, it'll all be saved on your computer. As well as for receipts, it's also useful just to save a web page you want to be able to access later on, either when you're not connected to the internet, or just in case the web page changes in the future and you want to be able to access it whether it changes or not. So that's my three tips for today. I hope you find them useful.